All right, thanks for watching. And today, let's do some PDEs, because it's been a while. In particular, let's try to solve the porous medium equation, which models heat flow in a porous uh, surface. Like think uh, a sponge or something. And in particular, it does look kind of like the heat equation, because the heat equation is ut equals Laplacian of u. But now we want to solve ut equals Laplacian of a power of u. u to the gamma, where gamma is bigger than 1. And already, let me simplify things. Let's assume gamma is 2. And I will give you the general, case, general solution later. OK. So, in, so now let's solve ut equals Laplacian of u squared, where here u is a function of x and t. And it turns out, just for like the heat equation, this equation is very friendly with separation of variables. So let's separate out the variables. In other words, let's assume that u of xt equals to a function of t times a function of x. So v of t times w of x, because c'est la vie of t. All right, and then if you plug this in, you get v of t wx with respect to t equals Laplacian of v squared of t times w squared of x. Here the Laplacian is with respect to x. And the nice thing is, so w doesn't depend on t, so it comes out. And then v becomes v prime. So v prime of t times w of x. And same thing with the Laplacian equals v squared of t Laplacian of w squared of x. And well, now let's put all the t's on one side, all the x's on the other side. And we get the following. So we get that v prime of t over v squared of t equals Laplacian of w squared of x over w of x. And again, the same spiel with separation of variables. This doesn't depend on x, which equals to something that doesn't depend on t. So it's actually constant, which equals to some lambda, which we'll find explicitly soon. OK, and the good thing is, uh, with this, we can already solve for v, because the equation is easy enough. So step two, v prime of t over v squared of t equals lambda. But this is just the derivative of minus 1 over v of t that equals lambda. So basically, um, 1 over v of t prime equals to minus lambda. So 1 over v of t equals minus lambda t plus a constant. So v is just 1 over minus lambda t plus a constant. Which is good, provided we find lambda, uh, which we'll do now with w. All right, so that's on the one hand. We found v. OK, now Laplacian of w squared of x over w of x equals lambda. And then Laplacian of w squared of x equals lambda w of x. And here, again, as is usual for PDEs, here we just want to find one solution. So let's guess the form of a particular solution. And just like for Laplacian, where power functions were good, same thing here. Let's guess w to be a power function. Yes, w of x equals to x to the alpha for some alpha to be determined. And by the way, I mean, I know it's not like calculus where you find a solution here. You do have to guess. And that's, again, because PDs are hard. So they're, um, it's hard to find solutions. Maybe in 200 years, there's a more systematic way of doing this. All right, and then what happens if we plug this into this equation, then we get 0, let's say, equals lambda w 
of x minus Laplacian of w squared of x again becomes lambda x to the alpha minus Laplacian of x to the 2 alpha okay and then this I have calculated Laplacians in the Laplace equation video so feel free to watch this and I did obtain a general form for the Laplacian of a power function which I won't repeat here I don't want to go to the essentials and what we get in the end is 0 equals lambda x to the alpha minus so 2 alpha times 2 alpha plus n minus 2 times x to the 2 alpha minus 2 so it's not quite what you think it's not like 2 alpha times you know 2 alpha minus 1 times this because of the absolute value makes it a bit harder to evaluate and by the way here n is the dimension of your space it's like how many uh, x variables there are okay but now here's the cool thing essentially we get this power functions are equal so we get lambda x to the alpha equals 2 alpha times 2 alpha plus n minus 2 x to the 2 alpha minus 2 and well the only way two power functions are equal are if the powers are equal and the coefficients are equal and it turns out this will help us first to solve for alpha and then to solve for uh, lambda because what do we get 2 alpha minus 2 equals alpha and I believe that just gives you alpha equals 2. So it turns out square functions here, they work. And so again, w is x squared. Okay. And on the other hand, what we get is lambda equals 2 alpha times 2 alpha plus n minus 2. So I believe, again, alpha is 2, so it's 4 times 4 plus n minus 2. And that is 4 times 2 plus n, or uh, yeah, 4 times n plus 2. Which is great, because now we actually found our solution, namely, I um, can't believe I'm saying namely, it's a curse. Again, what did we get? So uxt, it's v of t times w of x v we found this to be that reciprocal function so 1 over minus lambda t plus c w we found this to be the squaring function so x to the alpha with alpha is 2 and remember we found lambda so lambda was just 1 over <laughs> 1 over minus 4 to the n plus 2t plus c times x to the alpha uh, x to the square and well this is not all in PDEs right it's not all about finding the solution although this is a big step but more interestingly is you know analyzing the solution so what does that tell us physically and and by the way so we don't know what C is because we don't have any initial conditions but there's something kind of interesting about this solution because remember it models like heat flow and in particular this denominator can be zero in finite time because if we have minus four times n plus two t plus c equals zero that gives you t equals c over four times n plus two that's sometimes called t star and if c is positive which happens for initial conditions then what is this telling you? It tells you that this solution actually blows up in finite time. It becomes infinity in finite time, which tells you either one of two things, either in fluid flow in a sponge, it means a temperature becomes infinity in finite time, or we didn't find the correct solution. So maybe somewhere out there, there's a better solution and in fact there is this is called the Barenblatt solution and I know Gregory I mean I used to know Gregory Barenblatt uh, back in Berkeley and 
and that would be another solution. So, and if, again, if people are interested, I could make a video on that other solution. But this is already quite interesting. Or again, it could mean that the model is wrong, and we need to find a better uh, heat diffusion model. All right, last but not least, uh, here I did it with, um, you know, I think uh, gamma equals two. In case you're curious, what is a solution with gamma in general? In general, if you actually have the porous medium equation ut equals Laplacian of u to the alpha, then we do get the following. Let me see. In that case, alpha would be 2 over gamma minus 1, and lambda would be alpha gamma times alpha gamma plus n minus 2 which is still positive, and the solution is the same thing. So it would give you, I think, 1 over, I think, 1 minus uh, gamma lambda t plus c, and then time, I think, to the 1 over 1 minus gamma times x to the alpha. So kind of the, the same behavior. It will also blow up at a finite time. You know, but but that's why sometimes I like to simplify the problems, because this is harder to analyze. Um, and again, the question is, is this the correct solution? Depends on how you view it. Yeah. All right, I hope you like this. If you want to see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.